I fixed some things and I also added new scripts that are a huge time saver to me. So in this video, I'll run you through what I did in my Reaper configuration. If you haven't used it before, I'll tell you in the end of the video how to install it. If you have it already, you can just go to your packages and synchronize to get the new updates. First, the color palette. Someone was really persistent in the comments and he wanted me to make this also work with the items to color the items. So I made it work with that. If you select an item, you can click another color, it will color that item. If no items are selected, it will color the track. And I also modified it to close without asking you if you want to terminate the script, if this is the first time you're using it. So I added this first line of code to make sure when you double click again on the track, it will close. I also updated the escape action because it was previously removing the time selection and razor edit selection but if there was an item that was selected it was keeping it selected so i made sure that the escape button also clears the selection of the item and i added also a mouse modifier to open that color palette so media item bottom half if you double click with shift so hold shift and double click the bottom of the item, it will open the color palette. I'm telling you where I made the changes in case you are using my configuration, but you made some changes to it and you don't want to re-import my current configuration. So you can make these small changes on your own. I also fixed the zoom presets five and four and three to be a little bit more zoomed out. And I also made it center the view to the edit cursor. So right now when you click a zoom preset, it doesn't just zoom and leave the view sideways. It will center the view to the edit cursor. Now the scripts that are saving me the most time in my daily job it's this and this the first script is called move first media item on selected track to edit cursor in the long episodes where i have music for different sections of the episode i will have them in my template all in the beginning and when i need them down the road instead of going back scrolling back and getting it and moving it to where i need it to be i just hit one key it moves the first item on the track to the cursor position i can do this I can do this. It's moving that item when I click J. The next script I assigned it to K and it will copy the first media item on selected track and paste it at the edit cursor position. And I use that a lot for applause. So in the episodes, wherever I have people clapping, instead of always going back and finding the clap and copying it over, that's very disorienting to me and it wastes a lot of time. I'll just be going through the episode. Oh, here I have a clap. I just hit K. It copies the the first item on the track to wherever the cursor is okay again they're clapping here again that's really quick instead of going back each time and finding an item and copying it over these two scripts are a huge deal to me they might not be to you if you're just doing music but if you do post-production voiceover dubbing you're adding sound effects and music to the episode that is a huge deal and i'm really proud of these two scripts when you synchronize you will get these scripts and if you want to assign them to different keyboard shortcuts you can also do that when you select this script i have them to j and k you can just add a keyboard shortcut and press whatever button you have it doesn't need to be on the keyboard you can even have another controller button midi whatever and just click the button on it and it will be that script another script i wrote because i was having a hard time with dubbing is when i move an item this will will just select the item but it will not select the time or do a razor edit selection so if i just click shift and click on the next item to move them together this is not acting how i expect it to act so i made a script it's called razor edit and time select first selected media item what it does it's like clicking the bottom of the item so that it will do a time selection and razor edit area to the start and end of the item because that way i can just hold shift and click on the next item and i can move them together but if i just have a selection on the item without the time selection and razor edit i cannot do that now i didn't assign that script to any shortcut because I'm using it with another script that I called razor select current item and extend selection. So if I have a currently selected item like that, I can hover the mouse over the next item and click shift X and it will use both scripts, the one that bottom clicks the item and the one that adds another item to selection when you hold shift and click so you can see that script is just calling two scripts i couldn't make it work without the keyboard shortcut ideally i would have wanted to just 
to hold shift and click on the next item. But the way Reaper works, it moves the edit cursor before the script gets executed. So that's why I need the keyboard shortcut just for the first time. So if I'm doing this, I can just click shift X and it will select both of them. And then I can just hold shift and click on the next one and work normally. It's just for the first one if it's not selected. I also added polarity switches to my simple delay plugin. So right now you can click here and invert the polarity. If they are linked, both channels left and right will get inverted. If they are unlinked, you can invert the left independently from the right. Also something really important I changed in the preferences for the video is when moving audio items, seek video frame to, by default, it's mouse cursor position. I set it to start of audio item. So if I grab an audio item and move it, I will see the frame that corresponds with the beginning of the item. Because otherwise, if you leave that on default mouse cursor position and move this, you can clearly see that the beginning of the item is in front of the video. The video is here, it has not started yet, but when I click on the item, I can see a frame because it's showing me what's directly under the mouse cursor. I don't want that. So in the preferences video, I changed when moving audio items, seek video frame to start of audio item. And that makes things a lot easier when you're working in post-production to align things. Also, for some reason, the previous configuration file was capitalized. So it was reaper.ini in big letters like this. And Linux cannot read that. So I tried loading it on my Linux partition and the configuration configuration didn't load correctly because Linux is case sensitive. So I made sure in this version to have the config file in small letters. And now it loads on Windows and Mac and Linux correctly the way I made it. Now there's something that I'm struggling with in Linux is that everything works, but video is not working with Reaper. Because on Linux, the newest version of FFmpeg that Reaper supports is 4.2. And the current version that I have is 7 point something. So Reaper cannot see the video decoder and I tried to install previous versions and I didn't really succeed. So if anyone is using Reaper on Linux with video and it's working for him, please let me know in the comments. That was all for this version update. If you haven't used it before, I'll show you how to install it. Disclaimer, if you don't want to lose your current configuration, make sure to save that before importing mine. So go to the preferences and go all the way up to general and export configuration. You can leave everything checked here and just hit save and save it in the folder of your choice in case you need it back. Now to get my configuration, you will go to the first link in the description. It will take you to my GitHub and you will just go into the configurations folder and download the latest one version 2.3. Click on it and just hit the download button. After you download it, you're gonna come to the preferences again and general and import configuration and find my configuration file that you just downloaded and hit open. Then click OK. Do you want save project? No. Then you'll be greeted by this page. If you want everything I have, just click import. If you have made some changes to your configuration and you don't want this, you can turn off configuration. Or maybe you just want the keyboard shortcuts. You can turn everything off except for the keyboard shortcuts. So that's cursor and key maps. So you can pick and choose or leave everything on and hit import and you'll have all my settings. Now, if you already have my configuration and you just want to update the script, you can go to the extensions, repack, synchronize packages. This will synchronize everything, including my scripts. But if you only want to update my scripts, you go to manage repositories, right click on my name and about Daniel. And right here, you can click install slash update and choose install all packages. This will synchronize just my repository. Last time I had two different repositories, one for scripts and effects and the other for the themes and configurations and keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. But I just combined them into one. So right now, when you go to my repository for Reaper, you have all the configurations in one folder, then all the effects and all the scripts and anything else is in the miscellaneous folder. So right here, you can find just my keyboard shortcuts or just my mouse modifiers or just the splash screen. That is what you see when you open Reaper, this image. And also I have a file for my toolbars and menus and my theme and the toolbar icons. Now, if you're using my theme, it doesn't include all the icons 
icons because the icons are in a different folder. So if you look at the waveform zoom and this looks green, it should be blue. So you can also get my icons from here. You can download the zip file and then unzip it and go to options, show Reaper resource path. And in the data folder, you will find the toolbar icons. Just replace that folder with the one you just downloaded and you will have all the correct icons with the correct color. They will be blue like that, not green. I should probably make a separate video on how to install my configuration and how to update because it's not very efficient to say all this in every single video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're using my configuration for your job or just anything else, just let me know. I'm curious to know how many people are actually using it. YouTube thinks that you might like the video on the screen right now. So click on it and I'll see you there.